Thank you, Russ. Dawn Eden Goldstein, Holy Apostles College and Seminary. Uh, thank you for uh, arranging this, this panel. Uh, it, it's, it's been great to hear these different uh, points of view. I, I want to go to something that J.D. Flynn uh, mentioned with respect to uh, being a journalist in the online world where often uh, you're, you're, you know, in, in the online world you said there's concern for hits. Now, um, one thing that's true of everyone on this panel is that none of you are with a news source that deals in, in sensationalism. Certainly you're concerned about having interesting headlines, but not, you're, you're not, not concerned. Not everyone agrees with that. It's very kind of you. But, but yeah. you're not concerned <laughs> not, with, not with, with clickbait. <laughs> now, there are clickbait websites. Different people may have their own different ideas of what those, of what those are. Uh, for example, uh, LifeSite News is sort of, I would say, in between. There's some, uh, there's some journalism. There's also some clickbait. I know from personal experience that on the journalistic side, they don't always uh, check with their uh, sources or make corrections as any of your news organizations would. Uh, then there, there are what I would call the info wars of the Catholic online world, namely one Peter five or Rate Chele, and I'm sure others here can think, can think of more. Uh, now it seems that just as Fox News is, is uh, sometimes getting ideas for stories from InfoWars, it seems that that uh, phenomenon that's hit mainstream journalism uh, is uh, beginning to hit mainstream Catholic news sites as well. Ross, uh, I'm thinking of uh, in your book how you will uh, use um, 1 Peter 5. Um, or, uh, or someone who's a more sensational uh, writer such as John Zemirak and used their accounts of what Pope Francis said rather than uh, going to, uh, to Zenit or some organization that's putting Francis in context. So I'd like to ask you, Ross, uh, and, uh, and all of you, um, do you think that there's been, been some um, InfoWars type infiltration of, uh, of the mainstreaming of extremist uh, websites, and uh, and if 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 so, um, what do you think uh, can or should be done about that? Thank you. Thank you. Um, this I want to. I'm I'm going to answer quickly, but I also specifically want to punt to JD because you've had a lot of interactions. Those guys with, don't like me. Yeah. With people with with sort of critics from from essentially from your right who think that you're a milk toast. But, but first, I'll just, I'll just speak, speak for myself um, and say that my, my sense of things in the church is that there is, you know, th there is a segment of the, of the Catholic press that is prone to conspiracy theories and alarmism. At the same time, and this has been, you know, this has been true with the sex abuse crisis, and I know you and I disagree on this, but I think in certain cases it's been true uh, with some of the theological battles of the Francis Pontificate, I think there have been times when the extremists have been willing to say things and raise issues and raise stories that um, that other outlets weren't touching that turned out to be more accurate descriptions of what was going on. And I'm very comfortable saying that, that, was, that that's been true of the sex abuse crisis because I saw it in my own life, you know, that if you went back to 2003 and you know, I mean, pe people would come up to you during that scandal. I was, you know, a young journalist at the time. But I, I, would, I might not be on the panel, I'd be at the panel. And, you know, people would say things to me that I thought were ridiculous and totally implausible. Like, you know, that Cardinal McCarrick took priests and seminarians to his beach house and molested them, hypothetically, except not hypothetically. And those were the kind of things that at that time, some of, you know, it was either the, what you might call the far left of the Catholic press, the National Catholic Reporter, or places like The Wanderer and other traditionalist outlets that were covering that stuff. And, you know, in many cases they were right. And I think that, you know, the Infowars problem with those sites is a real problem, but it doesn't change the fact that there have been a lot of, there have been a lot of things that mainstream, Catholic journalists didn't want to believe were true that turned out to be true. And I sort of bear that in mind in how I relate to the fringe as bad as the fringe can sometimes be. But you have a more direct relation, a more adversarial relationship with some of those Well, sites. the thing is, I don't, want, I don't want to have an adversarial relationship with them, but I do. 
I think it's because of Twitter. I wish that I didn't have it, but I do. And <laughs> it's, so, like a uh, it's like a disease. Right, There's yeah, no right, antidote right, exactly. yet. Um, I, I think it's really important to recognize that there are, that there are extremists who are angry at, at, on both sides, that there are extremists in the church who are angry from the left and extremists on, who are angry from the right. And so it's not just a right problem, and I think it often gets painted that way. I also think it's important to differentiate between people who hold um, strong views about, strong views about the, the, the Second Vatican Council and the mass, uh, you, you know, the extraordinary form of the mass and dignitatis humanae and, ecum and ecumenism and are genuinely sort of trying to promote their strong views but are trying to do so with integrity who get lumped into people who I think are just sort of trying to be very loud and create a great deal of chaos and, 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 um, and, and I'm not even sure what their ends are all the time. And, and those groups get lumped in and I think that's unfair and, and we have to be careful about that. Um, but it's also true, you know, I think sometimes those guys get mad at us because they tell us, they'll say to me, well, you know that the church is full of this, or you know that, you know, that there's a huge homosexual problem in every seminary in America, you know that. And they get mad at me because my response is, well, I'm, I'm open to the possibility of these things, but we don't, write, we don't put things on our website until we verify them, until we have facts that are connected with them. And I think sometimes there's a real frustration. People want you to just sort of say what you think and treat it as news, and for those who aren't willing to do that, you know, they, they, they feel like we're, in my case, I, a lot of people say that, everyone but bishops says that I'm in the, sort of the pocket of the bishops, and then the bishops say, why are you writing all this stuff that we don't like? So you can't win, I guess, in some ways, but, um, but that phenomenon is, is, I think, largely people who feel that their voices have not been heard within the institution, and then they self-perpetuate into something that creates a whole lot of anger, but I have empathy for people who, who feel that those voices haven't been heard, or feel like they're not getting what they need from the church and then are sort of sucked into that, that world.